Hey guys, now we're going to go through the annual revenue forecast sheet. This is going to calculate the annual portion of the revenue you're going to forecast. And this is when you have upfront payments, which are typically of around uh, 12 months with a discount between around 10 and 20%, but normally more around 20%. This is done exactly the same as the monthly sheet. So I'm going to go through this relatively quickly, but still take you step by step to understand all the assumptions you need to fill in and some of the logic behind it. We'll start off um, pretending you just want to fill the thing in and then we'll come into some detail. So to fill this in in under a minute, what you're going to do is firstly assume how long is your contract length for your annual payments. That number is the first yellow one here in bold, which is 12 months. You can set this anything you want. It can be six months, so semi-annually. It can be even longer, say 18 months if you want but it doesn't really make sense to be honest. It's best to keep it at 12 months. The next thing you want to do is of those people who are going to subscribe for annual package of all the trials you're going to get through, what percentage of these people are going to pick one of your packages, either your basic, your premium or your pro. Now here we'll put in 50% of your basic, 30% of your premium, and the remainder is 20%. Now, if you say we want this to be higher for your premium than your pro, unless you're basic, you would say type in 30% here and type in 30% here. And now your pro is 40%, your premium is 30%, and your basic is 30%. If you want to say, well, in future, this is going to change a bit, you just copy these assumptions, paste them here, and congrats. Now your basic is now 40%, and your pro has gone down 30% from 40 you can do this every other month that you feel like it, so long as you know how to justify this to your investors. It's all about the logic, right? The next assumption you're gonna fill in here to skipping the adoption curve is for the whole period of time of each monthly cohort, what percentage of those people will ever actually pay you? Will they or not? I don't know. And you do this for your paid and your earned sections. So we're assuming here that for each month over all of time, 25% of people will ever pay you. And for your earned ones, 30% will ever pay you. Now you can set these assumptions the same, lower, higher, whatever you feel like. Now we made assumption that they're going to purchase over time, right? But what is that schedule for it? What I've done here now is assume it's going to take you four months for all people that you acquire for say the month of January to eventually pay you. So it'll take four months before 100% of people will actually start uh, paying your bills. In the first month, only 25% of people will. The next month, 25% more will, so half your customers will have paid. The next month, 75% of people will, then 100. Now, if you say you want this to take a year, well, you would just go up to your 12 months month 12 and type that in as 100 percent and your previous numbers you've made them smaller so now it's going to take a whole lot longer before you get all your paying customers to pay you there you go it now takes you 12 months to get to 100 percent and you can change that schedule depending on how you like it now the second last uh, main assumption you want to do is what is your churn rate now this is done a little bit different to the monthly sheet because you have renewal periods. So we picked 12 months as your contract period. So every 12 months, your customers are going to come up for renewal and they can either renewal, they can churn, which means leave you, or they can move to another package. So what is the annualized rate at which people are going to churn out? Okay, I've typed in 25% which implies that the monthly churn rate is 2.4%. Now, if you want to make that churn rate higher, you would increase that rate to say 30% on the annual churn rate, which would make it 2.9, or say lower at 20%, which would mean 1.8. But correlate these a little to your monthly numbers so they're a bit aligned or have some logic as to why it's going to be different. I think 25% sort of makes some sense. Now, your churn rates can be higher in the early periods of time. So if you wanted to jack those up, I mean, you can change the first couple of months, but it's not meaningful. But you can go to your first 12 months with this in column T, and you could say, well, initially for the first year or two, our churn rate is going to be higher. So that would make it 32.5% is your churn rate. 
or maybe it might be slightly lower. Which point it'd be twenty two point five percent. Okay, that's just a simple way for you to change around with these assumptions if you want things to change over time. Otherwise, you can just keep it simple and say, do you know what? We reckon people are going to churn out every year at twenty five percent. It's not really going to change very much. Now, at that renewal period, people can go between your basic, your premium, your pro, which means that there has to be six assumptions for this. So what percentage of people go from your basic to premium, your basic to pro, your premium to pro, and downgrades, premium to basic, pro to basic, and pro to premium. The implications being from this is that the packages of premium pro are priced higher than your basic, and your pro is higher than your premium. So if people are switching down to packages, your MRR is going to decrease. The number of customers you have is effectively net net the same. It's just the paying you different amounts of money. And that's it. So you can really fill in that sheet really fast and get some super powerful results if that's what you want to do. Let's go into a couple more details so you understand what's in this sheet. So like every single sheet, there's a little guide which explains how you fill this thing in. We have called link assumptions. So if we link to other sheets, we put these up here so you know what the dependencies are. And here you can see it's our ARPAs and your trials. Um, the formulas down below here are quite lengthy and complicated. So if you don't want to deal with them, you don't have to. You can just look at the summaries here and see, well, this is the waterfall, the schedule for your customers, your bookings, and your MRR. If something doesn't look quite right, and you're pretty sure your assumptions are good, and there might be something with the formula, feel free to then dig down. But this is a nice little helicopter view as to what's happening for your customers, revenue, MR, and your bookings. The bookings is the only real calculation which is fundamentally different to your monthly sheet because we're not really calculating bookings for them. Um, all your assumptions have comments, so you can understand exactly what's happening here. Another thing worth noting is that what what proportion of all your trial users go to your annual is set in your monthly sheet. So here, we've decided 80% will be monthly, therefore 20% will be annually. And that is just a, a link to here, so you can see that it's 20%, and that a few different packages will become 20%. Now, I've mentioned this before in the other video. If you, in your pricing sheet, in the basic pricing sheet, decide that you want to use package two, which is a usage-based fee. We don't actually know what people are going to use over time, so it doesn't make sense to give them an upfront discount on that, right? So I've made some adjustments here that if you pick option two for one or all your packages, it will strip out the that portion from the annual and put it into the monthly sheet. So if you're if you kept the assumptions of 80% monthly and 20% annually, if you use package two, it'll be 0% annually and 100% monthly because people will not be going to annual packages. Does that make sense? Now, once you fill in these assumptions, they all filter down through all the lengthy calculations. This is split up in basic, premium, and your pro. It's pretty much exactly the same format for all of them. It starts out by taking your start of month customers, your end of month customers, adding your new ones from both your paid and your trial, deducting your churn, figuring out who's actually up for renewal and when, and deciding who's then going to renew, and then what package switching happens between these. Now, what we do is we will first deduct your churn and then allow your packet switching, which ensures that it never exceeds the amount that it actually should if your churn rate's high and your number of customers are low. We then, once we forecast our customers, we will forecast our revenue based on those customer forecasts. So the customer uh, waterfall is a lot longer than the calculations for the revenue. So we'll see here that we take our pricing for it, we'll, uh, take our original pricing, the difference being that when people renew, you can change the prices so people can pick, or you can pick the new price at which people will be doing it if it's a price change. 
But if people were on a previous package and they're churning out, what amount of revenue are they churning out? It's the amount that they paid originally before, right? Not the new price. So to make sure those calculations work, there are formulas to enable you to make sure that you know for the new pricing or the original pricing is which people are going to renew at or churn out of. Then our waterfall will just take the start of the month, um, add your new customers on the new pricing, churn people out on the original pricing, add people from package switching on your new pricing, and like the churn, make deductions for upgrades on original pricing so that your basic package will go down and your MRR will increase in the other ones. Add those together and that gets you your end of month MRR. The bookings works pretty much the same thing, except because of how bookings work, the logic is just a little bit different. But all these calculations sum things up and create the right results for you and send feed into all the other sheets that you need. Now, if you want to get into these in a lot of detail, I'll make a video to show how that works. But otherwise, if you just want to um, get through the model really quickly and get back to executing, there's only a couple of assumptions you need to make and get some super powerful results. Cool.